Welcome. Thank you for joining us today to review scientific advances in multiple sclerosis research and treatments. We appreciate your attendance and your interest in managing your health through better education. This empowers you and those close to you in optimizing your health and your quality of life, which is what the Rocky Mountain MS Center is all about. I'm Anne-Marie Peterbaugh, and I've been living with MS for five years. The Rocky Mountain MS Center has been instrumental in helping me through my journey to optimal quality of life, and that is why I volunteer and fundraise for this MS Center and why I joined the Board of Directors earlier this year. I am passionate about this organization and what it can do for our MS family. Six years ago, I awoke to many problems as I tried to get ready for work and get my 15-month-old daughter ready for her day. First, I lost my balance in my closet, and it didn't go away. Then I realized my eyesight was off in my left eye. I didn't quite realize it was my left eye. I just knew they weren't the same. As if I had a sunglass lens over one eye, and that didn't go away. Next, I felt electrical sensations, which I fondly or unfondly call zingers, in the left part of my head, on my kind of in my brain area. And then my right arm started shaking when I tried to write. This is my story, and I'm sure you have a similar one. And it was terrifying. It took nine months to receive a diagnosis after also experiencing numbness in my arms and legs, leg drag, extreme fatigue, sleeping 12 hours a night, and napping several times throughout the day, often at work during my lunch hour, in my car, and in the afternoon. I was trying to hide what I knew wasn't normal. I experienced optic neuritis, and perhaps the most frightening experience was losing my cognitive abilities, not being able to remember routine aspects of my job, and trying to hide it not remembering the name of my cousins, requesting an ATM card from my bank, and having no recollection. I actually called them up to ask why on earth they sent me a new and different ATM card, because I was annoyed that I was going to have to go into the bank and set up a new code. And my husband, after he heard me hang up, reminded me that I requested it and why I requested it. I don't do any of the finances anymore. <laughs> it eventually came back to me but it took days for that memory to come back. I was falling apart physically, cognitively, emotionally, and psychologically. Unfortunately, the first neurologist I saw told me there were non-remarkable findings on my MRI and missed my diagnosis completely. Fortunately, after I pushed for answers from her, that doctor referred me to the medical experts at the Rocky Mountain MS Center at Anschutz Medical Center, and I began getting additional testing. I also found my way to the counseling services of the Rocky Mountain MS Center since I was struggling and scared. The counselor was the first person I spoke with who understood what I was truly going through on all dimensions. They provided invaluable guidance about what I would face on my new journey. This spanned education needs, disability concerns, medication uncertainty, coping strategies, general guidance with the changes I was going through as an individual a wife, a mom, a daughter, and an employee. By the time I received my diagnosis, I had been in a flare-up for two months. I didn't know about flare-ups yet. I just knew I was falling apart over the course of eight weeks. Two days after I received my diagnosis, I attended MS 101 with my husband, which helped us both understand so much more about this disease and the journey ahead. I still remember learning from patients about their experience with steroids and hearing a mother of a 15-year-old daughter speak about her daughter's journey. I have a six-year-old daughter. She was two at the time. And this really stuck with me. One day later, I got optic neuritis in my other eye. Suddenly, I was the one being considered for IV steroids. I had only been diagnosed three days before, and the night before, I heard everyone say how the steroids were uh, very difficult. <laughs> Needless to say, I called my Rocky Mountain MS Center counselor on a Friday night after hours to consult with her. She answered and helped me through this very difficult moment. 
she told me it was the standard of care and I was comfortable that it was something I needed to do. The nurse came out at 8 a.m. Saturday morning and put an IV in my arm. I was to self-administer steroids twice a day and they wrecked me. I lost my appetite, I was nauseous and lost 15 pounds in 10 days. I was anxiety ridden and depressed from this medication, but it was the standard of care so I knew it had to be. After 10 days of this hell and beginning to feel like the steroids were getting out of my system, I felt strong enough to try to take a short walk around the block. I thought I was back to some sense of normalcy. The next day I awoke with a migraine which lasted for 10 more days. Apparently the steroids had affected my hormonal balance. I had never had a migraine before and this was a new hell. I couldn't be in any light or anything above a whisper, which wasn't easy with a toddler. I spent all my days in bed in the dark. My days became nights and nights became days. I couldn't care for my two-year-old. My out-of-state family began taking turns flying in to help us. I remember having a 12-inch square ice pack on top of my head and it gave little relief. And my most heart-wrenching memory was to hear my little girl pounding on my bedroom door crying and screaming for mommy. I call this my perfect storm. After my perfect storm, I was put on an effective medication. I began receiving counseling from the Rocky Mountain MS Center on a regular basis as my world had turned upside down. I was unable to work due to extreme daily chronic fatigue. My identity was getting redefined. Gravity as I knew it had changed. I felt like I had been picked up and placed in front of a bridge and told to cross over into a different country that would be my new home. No one asked if I wanted to live there. I knew I had to cross the bridge and make it to the other side. I just didn't know what would be on the other side, what life would be like in this new MS country. My integrity was challenged by my long-term disability insurance company over the course of three years. First, they had private investigators follow me and my family. Then they sent someone from their corporate headquarters in Connecticut to my house to interview me, or really to look at me to see if I looked disabled. They told me I looked fine in a later report that I could go back to work full time. Well, sometimes we do look fine and sometimes we don't. Of course, when I'm fatigued, I'm home in bed as the pain sets in when I can no longer sit up or hold my head up and can no longer think a thought or understand a word, no one sees me. They did not understand MS. And finally, some of my financial security was also completely up in the air, adding to the stress. Today, five years later, after my diagnosis, I've moved to a different disease-modifying therapy, receiving personalized medical care from my neurologist at the Rocky Mountain MS Center. I wrapped up counseling, but I know that whenever I have a need, the Rocky Mountain MS Center is there and understands this journey. Disability services helped me with my long-term disability and my social security applications and appeal, which were mandatory with my long-term disability policy. And I continue to benefit from the various MS seminars where the experts at the Rocky Mountain MS Center have sifted out key information and present it in an accessible and digestible form. This knowledge sharing empowers each of us managing our journey. Each person's journey is unique, but the types of need are the same. In medical education, and you can look at the slide if, if that helps, because this it was something that I uh, learned from uh, the folks at the Rocky Mountain MS Center. We learn of the disease-illness dichotomy, a dichotomy being a division between two opposite groups. That is that sickness is really experienced in two major ways. Disease, which is biological and psychological malfunctioning of the body physically, and this would include all of our symptoms, optic neuritis, loss of balance, fatigue, cognitive issues, numbness, and even the anxiety and depression that many of us suffer from. 70% of us with MS experience this, and it's not that we're simply depressed or anxious or irritable because we have a chronic disease. There's a biological change that happens with MS, and this is one of the symptoms. And the list goes on and also affects our ability to work. The other part of sickness is illness, which is the psychology of the human and psychosocial experiences. What is my future? What will I experience on my MS journey? 
I'm being labeled disabled, but I don't think of myself as disabled. I'm still me. Who am I now? Am I still a whole person? Am I still the person I was before if I can't do the things I used to do? How will others perceive me as something less than what I was? Illness affects self-image, self-esteem, and social relationships. The Rocky Mountain MS Center understands this and is unique in offering services and programs to take care of the whole patient throughout our patient journey. I am volunteering with this organization because while MS has changed my life, the Rocky Mountain MS Center truly changed my life for the better, and I'm so grateful for this. The beginning of the journey was the worst, and it was difficult for three years, but I learned to manage through the guidance I received from all the program support and the clinical care and the educational programs. Your journey will be what you make of it, and we are here to help and want to help. That is what we are passionate about doing for our MS family. We offer medical, oh, and I'm going to just uh, show you. This was my attempt at putting my patient journey with the Rocky Mountain MS Center into a diagram. And you'll see that the good news is that in 2013, there's less going on. <laughs> and in the year before that, there was less going on. But you can see that big cluster of all the things that were going on uh, when I got diagnosed in February of 2009 and 2010. And it wasn't just going to see my neurologist and getting medication. It was so much more. And I don't know any other organization that understands this and could have helped me through it. And so the question, I think, for all of us is what does our MS journey look like? The Rocky Mountain MS Center wants to help all of us achieve comprehensive wellness and improved quality of life. If we got MS, we, we've got it. And you know, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing, nobody asked me to cross the bridge. Um, but I had to, and we all have to, and so we have so many services to help us through that life in this new MS country. So of course you know that we have a team of expert neurologists eager to provide you exceptional care. And you already know this because you've come to hear many of them speak today. We provide comprehensive medical care to 3,000 MS patients at the Rocky Mountain MS Center at Anschutz Medical Campus. In 2013, this year, we brought a seventh fellowship-trained physician on, and we anticipate over 8,500 patient visits. This is up significantly from the past few years. We have pediatric specialists, which serve approximately 60 children and their families. Another area that is very close to my heart, having a young child, and knowing that this center is focused on children and how we can help them and their families. We provide specialty MS care to 300 uninsured individuals at our affiliated clinic at the Rocky Mountain MS Center at Potomac Street, which was launched in 2008, and also at, the, at Denver Health and the VA, where we help over 250 individuals. We're providing care to those with diseases which respond well to MS treatments but aren't formally MS. They're related diseases. And unfortunately, these not very well-known diseases, diseases often affect children. Our research is leading much of the dialogue in the MS community. In the clinical research area, we coordinate and facilitate nearly 40 MS-specific clinical trials with more than 1,000 participants since 2010 at our Anschutz Medical Campus. We also pursue translational research. I didn't know what that was, um, but what it is, I mean, when I, when I first got involved, I do now, but um, it combines what's happening in the lab and the clinical data from patients and combines those to, fo to focus on um, quicker treatments into the patient community. And so right now we're working on an MS vaccine, another area that is very exciting to me, especially once again with a child, but generally for the MS community. We engage in cutting edge neuroscience research as one of 25 clinical sites currently participating in the NeuroNext project led by our medical director, Dr. Timothy Vollmer. And in the counseling area, no one knows what to expect or the many dimensions of their life that will be affected when their pre-diagnosis 
and even once they get diagnosed. No one is doing well when one gets diagnosed with a chronic disease, no matter how they behave, how they look, or how many lesions they have. I only had four lesions, and look at my journey. Psychological research shows us that the earlier one gets guidance, the better the outcomes. We offer counseling and support to 155 individuals, providing 561 units of service annually through individual appointments, family sessions, and support groups for people with MS and family caregivers. And education is truly power. Knowing what our journey will look like, understanding the ins and outs of this are really what can help us manage our journey. We run an MS 101 class for newly diagnosed individuals, which I highly, highly recommend, three times a month, led by a licensed social worker. MS 101 helps the patient and the caregivers understand this disease and what this journey will entail. We provide patient, family, and community education to more than 2,500 people through monthly classes and seminars, and we provide MS-specific education to an estimated readership of 76,000 people through a quarterly education magazine, Informs, and an electronic newsletter, EMS News. As an MS patient, I can say that the information that I read in Informs is information that I find highly accessible, and I have my family in Michigan and friends in Chicago who say they want to understand this better, read this magazine, and they say they understand this in a way that they've never been able to before. Our disability assessment services administer um, services to 350 people, and on average, 90% of patients obtain Social Security disability insurance benefits after going through the clinic. Again, I was um, a recipient of these services. And I cried. <laughs> I, through all my, my services, I was strong sometimes, and I cried, and they understand. It's very hard to go through, but it feels much better coming out on the other side and having their help. We have hydrotherapy services. We provide individual hydrotherapy services as well as community hydrotherapy programs to more than 180 individuals annually. And we have our King Adult Day Enrichment Program where we provide specialized adult day services annually to 180 people with progressive MS and other neurological illnesses and disabilities, serving an average of 60 individuals per day. So we hope the seminar today is informative and helps you on your journey with MS. We invite you to engage with us in our programs and our services so we can assist you in optimizing your health. We also welcome all voices, those with MS, caregivers, and friends, to volunteer and or donate to the Rocky Mountain MS Center so we can continue to do our best for our MS family. Thank you.